Our first speaker is Martin Freeman from uh, Diamond Aircraft. They, maybe you've heard that they have an electric version of the DA-40, one of the most used training planes. So I give you the mic and it's yours. All right, welcome everybody. So my name is Martin Freiling and I'm the project manager and technical lead of uh, the EDA-40, which is Diamond's latest project in a way moving forward to electrify aviation. So in the next eight minutes, I'm going to tell you a bit about what started this electrification at Diamond and why we chose this um, product to develop it further. So um, Diamond actually has a quite rich history of electrification products. Uh, projects and it all started back in 2011 with a DA-36 E-Star, which was world's first uh, aircraft with a serial hybrid architecture. This um, this project got so much attention uh, that uh, we, with a partner, decided to develop it further. And the uh, DA-36 E-Star II was born, which had an improved performance and uh, a mass reduction as well. We also played around with uh, distributed propulsion systems, um, so with HEPEN, which is our hybrid uh, electric multi-engine plane. We demonstrated world's first twin-engine serial hybrid aircraft. So you can see where this is going with, with world's first. Um, so with the EDA of 40, we intend to become uh, the world's first certified CS23, and with CS23, I mean the full CS23 level two DFR and IFR training aircraft. So, first of all, why electric? Um, you must have heard this numerous times before. Um, it actually poses a value for the customer. So, electric aircrafts offer a, a significant value to operator, the operators when compared to combustion engine variants. And these key benefits include, of course, reduced operating costs, simpler maintenance, leading to uh, higher uptimes, and of course, the environmental issues. So, a lower noise fit and footprint and lower local emissions. And why did we choose to do it now? Um, well, that's because of the recent developments, especially in the, in the battery technology. Um, we can see actually some good positive trends going up, so the battery price is falling, and in the meantime, the battery capacity is uh, rising. And furthermore, the regulatory process, the regulators, EASA and FAA, are getting a better understanding of what is necessary to safely integrate such a battery pack in an aircraft. So then it was for us important to look at the customer requirements. Um, and the majority of our customers are actually uh, private and professional flight uh, trading organizations. And we sat with them around the table and asked them, what do you need in the aircraft? And basically, for an electric training aircraft, there are three things. Um, they fly uh, short but frequent uh, training flights. The flight duration is somewhere between one and two hours, and they need a platform to do VFR and IFR exercises. So translating that into a product uh, requirements, it means that uh, for an all-electric training aircraft, you need a single-engine training platform that has VFR and IFR capability, that has at least this 60 minutes endurance, plus reserve, and a fast turnaround time. I want to take this moment to quickly explain the difference between uh, like the EDA-40 electric version and the classical combustion engine, because we do not see it as a direct replacement. Um, in fact, it is seen as an enhancement or an add-on to the diamond aircraft training family. So the EDA-40, the electric version, can be used in the first phase of pilot training, so for all flights to the vicinity of the airfield, and then later on in the pilot training process where longer cross-country uh, flights are uh, needed, uh, the DA-40 NG uh, can be used. Then taking a look at the product. So we introducing the, the, the DA-40, what is it? Um, this is going to be uh, an all-electric and initially two-seat uh, circuit trainer. And it's characterized by, by its low operating costs. Further, we're going to implement a, a fast charge battery system to allow for quite fast turnaround times which are needed in a flight training environment. Um, about a, bit, about a couple of figures about the range and endurance. So the endurance, including the reserve, is going to be 90 minutes, and it's really, the range is going to be approximately 115 nautical miles. I must say these are based right now on our current models, and we are working up to building an electric prototype to actually verify them uh, in flight. 
What's also important, uh, that's part of the training concept, is that we have similar controls and a similar cockpit layout to the uh, DA40MG, so that any student pilot can easily can start on, on the electric version and quite easily transition to uh, the uh, DA40MG uh, once he or she requires longer flights. And then in terms of uh, certification, um, this is going to be an STC on the already existing DA40MG airframe, meaning that we are, are so we're quite comfortable saying that we finish the certification by the end of next year, so the end of 2023. Then let's look a bit more about the details of the powertrain. So uh, we're working together with, with our two partners. First of all, uh, EP Power Systems, a uh, US-based battery uh, supplier, which is offering us a modular battery system for our aircraft. And physically, we place the batteries in two locations of the aircraft, um, behind the engine, up front, and under, as a belly pod under the aircraft. And the reason why we put it as a belly pod under the aircraft is to be, say, future-proof, um, and that we will not um, have to occupy the rear seat with batteries. So uh, initially, it's gonna be certified as a two-seater. However, uh, as technology progresses, we intend to upgrade the payload to allow for at least three seats to be occupied. And then just we recently uh, announced that we also have a collaboration with Safran. Uh, Safran is going to provide us with the Ingenious 100 power plant, um, a, an ideal power plant for uh, this type of aircraft. It's an air-cooled uh, smart motor with an integrated uh, controller in a quite small package. And uh, what's interesting, it has a redundant electrical design. It's basically two uh, electric motors in one housing, which would greatly increase the safety and the uh, redundancy of a single engine aircraft. Then let's take a bit of detail uh, at the battery system. So um, uh, the EP power system will not only provide us with the individual battery modules, they would also provide us with the battery power management, um, safety features, service disconnects, low voltage uh, distribution, as well as the entire cabling. And it's actually quite um, quite neat, neat package to integrate into our aircraft. And let's take a look a bit about our uh, electrical system. It's going to be uh, at a higher voltage than what's normally done in uh, e-aviation at the moment, 800 volts, which would uh, lead to uh, lower cable masses and uh, less current losses. The, cast the capacity will be approximately 85 kilowatt hours. Um, and what's also very interesting about this modular design is the mechanical integration. Uh, basically, these modules can be linked together in a row, not requiring any uh, jumper cables in between, and that allows for quite efficient um, integration. And these battery modules intend to have a uh, TSO approval, making it quite easy to uh, certify along with our airframe. And then the Ingenious 100 motor. Um, so the Ingenious is actually a product line offering electric, a range of electric motors from the single digit uh, hours all the way up to 500 kilowatts. Hours will be approximately 130 kilowatts and it actually will enhance the EDA 40's performance. Thermally, it's quite easy to manage because it's an air cooled uh, motor, meaning with some simple ducting, we can keep the temperatures under control. And the efficiency will be well over 90% with, uh, and above 94% in uh, room side. And uh, what I also mentioned is it's a very neat package with the inverter already within the, within the housing, meaning that system in integration of the aircraft is, um, is very manageable. And the certification will have its own EASA type certificate, will be completed uh, as early as mid of next year. Then to, um, to end, um, so what is the EDA 40 in practice? Well, first of all, it's the lower operating cost, and this is why it makes sense at this moment to use this relatively novel technology. We expect a, um, a reduction of approximately 40% when compared to conventional powertrains because of the lower maintenance costs and the lower fuel costs. And then just a quick note about the charging. We mentioned fast turnaround times. So together with our, with our battery partner, we are developing a uh, charging solution that will allow uh, a turnaround time of 20 to 30 minutes. So you can imagine uh, in a training environment, uh, a training flight of one hour, the aircraft lands, and then in 20 to 30 minutes it will be recharged again. And that's about the time needed to breathe, debrief um, the student pilot. And then about the future, I mentioned that we want to be future-proof. Um, we actually expect that we can increase the range of the payload 
passive battery technology involves. Uh, these are so-called modular battery systems, meaning that it's very easy to swap them and upgrade them in the future. And uh, we already expect the next gen battery system, so the ones with the higher energy density, to already be available in the next two to four years. So I wish I had a lot more time to talk about the EDA for Unfortunately, I've been limited. And so thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward uh, to your questions uh, later on. Thank you, Mark. And, uh... It's exactly the problem. I also would have a lot of questions right away, and I know you have, but we only have limited time on a, on a show. That's why I try to give that you did get a glimpse of everybody, and then where you're more interested, they are here at the show, so you can have a follow up, and you can follow up in our magazines because we will have a larger report on our magazine where we'll give you more details on the aircraft. We were already reporting on the DA40 when it was first announced last year and now we're uh, getting uh, closer so we hope that soon we can do electric training flying i just mentioned uh, forgot to mention it's mentioned in the announcement yes there is one aircraft already which is on the market which is the vedis uh, uh, web cslsa so it is in another class and it has a very limited flight time so now i come our next speaker is again in another class. It's uh, a new aircraft, what uh, Kalin Goronga from Electra Solar is announcing. Um, and this is an aircraft uh, which want to fly in the ultralight class, because luckily, not long ago, the weight limit was lifted up to 600 kilograms, and he will explain us how with 600 kilograms he will make longer flight time possible. Kalin, it's yours. Thank you for the invitation, I'm happy to be here. Um, I am uh, Kalim Gorogar, the CEO of the company Electra Solar in Landsberg. And we present now Electra Trainer and Ultralight two seat electric, electric aircraft. What is special for our aircraft? And a, a little uh, short history we have an aircraft, Electra One, flying since 2011, uh, electric. I have a lot of experience, and last year this aircraft was certified in the German ultra class uh, LTF UL 2020, the new regulation. And now, based on this experience, we scaled Electra 1 to the Electra 2. This is a big advantage for us because we reduce development cost and development risk. And for the certification, we need only to repeat the same procedure from Electra 1 on Electra 2 because it's a similar aircraft from the aerodynamic point of view, structure point of view, and electric power unit and system point of view. Uh, what is uh, special for air, this aircraft? At first, energy efficiency. It's light and has a very good aerodynamic glide ratio of 25. And for this reason, we can fly more than two hours. Uh, something special, we can fly horizontally only with 12 kilowatt. It's very less. We have a battery package of 35 kilowatt hour. And in this way, we can fly two and a half hours with reserve. Uh, also special for this aircraft is uh, 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 very good comfort, a large cabin, 1.25 meter wide, accommodating pilot, two meter pilots. And at the same time, this aircraft was designed for very low operation cost. And we realized this low operation cost due to the low operation cost of electric power unit. And this operation cost is not only current, not only all the all, all, uh, electricity, which is about only 3.6 euro per hour. Also low operation cost to the battery because the battery also has a life and we need to pay for this life reducing. So totally we get an operation cost of our electric power unit about 20 euro per hour. And also if compare this with a, a normal Rotax engine, especially in this time where the fuel uh, costs are increasing, operation cost of rotors are at least 50 and more, let's say, 6 euros per hour. So we save about 40 euros per hour, due only due to the operation cost of uh, electric power unit. 
Another important goal for us was low noise. Noise? So if we speak about uh, sustainability, we don't speak, we speak not only about CO2 emissions. Emissions means also noise. And noise is a big problem in Germany. If one can bring an aircraft community friendly to start close to communities without noise. So the aircraft is not an enemy for community. We have another big advantage, our charging system. We have two chargers we can put in the baggage compartment. It's a portable charging system and we can load in one hour for one hour of flight. So you see here transition. In the foyer host, we present Electra 1. And you see here Electra 2 are similar. You are looking using uh, quite the same aircraft. But Electra 2 is a two seater. I explained the advantages also before. Uh, in, another big advantage is a short start distance. We have a good engine, 50 kilowatt power continues, and we can lift off in 100 meters. It's a big advantage. And now you see here a, a diagram. What means this diagram? The consumption, uh, how we can fly uh, six, seven hours of training with our system. Of course, if we consume the whole battery, then with two and a half hours, we fly two hours and into charge. But it's another, also another possibility. We fly a flight hour 50 minutes, then we charge 30 minutes, then we fly another 50 and charge. So in this way, you see here, we can uh, fly about uh, seven flight hours per day. Very efficient. And why we can fly? We have a system without liquid cooling, because we protect the battery. Without the battery, with 0.35C, we discharge with the same. We, we are climbing only 1C. So we protect the battery, we have a long battery life, and in this way we don't increase the temperature of the battery. We can live only with air cooling, it's a big advantage. With a data sheet from the speeds, the best flight ratio is at a low speed, about 110 kilometers. But using our variable pitch propeller, electric variable pitch propeller, we can also fly with 100 knots. A little less range and time. The best optimum point is 110. We have a good climb rate, uh, rate about 3 meters per second, and uh, limit speed according to German regulation, 45 knots. Operation cost, I explained, we have 60 euro per hour for flight training. If we fly about 500 hours per year, like a flying school, we can reduce operation cost to 60 euro, which Wonderful, wonderful value. And another special thing for our aircraft is our digital platform. The whole data are memory uh, storage in our system. When we are working for cloud system for data transmission, the customer wants it. Can we can have access on all the data aircraft of the aircraft and use this for operation and the optimal maintenance. Here's some picture we presented in the German Museum, Electra Group, in one month before. Here's in our booth, you see we have a nice uh, light uh, landing here, electric retractable. In front you see the 50 kilowatt engine, half HPD 50. Nice interior, a very good instrumentation and display. This is not only a display, it's a high, very efficient, strong computer. We can extend this to an optimal, to an optionally pilot system. It's a next step for us. Uh, have complete flight, uh, completely automatic. We have the experience of unmanned flight, we show in the video later. Thank you. This was presentation if you can show a video yes. which presents uh, our products we have many products in our company now we present it on the trainer it's uh, 10 years in more than 10 years we invested in high technology our team is half mechanics uh, structure half electronic with all the IP is our 
like the power unit structure, aerodynamic, uh, autopilot, and solar system. This is Electro One. Flying since more than 10 years, in 2015, we flew all the Alps, more than 3,000 meter altitude. We use this aircraft for some research. It is doing nothing here, it's automatic. We do pictures, we use this for 3D mapping. We have a cooperation partner for this. We have a nice camera system with five cameras. This is the uh, Electra to Solar Agmen. This flew more than 10 kilometers unmanned, including start and landing. You see here some videos. Can fly up 20 kilometers, also through the clouds. It's a robust aircraft, can fly in middle turbulence, moderate turbulence. This is some pictures from 10 kilometers. This flight was 2019. Another project is the Electra to Solar. We delivered the this aircraft to the project Solar Stratos in Switzerland. Here, Rafael Bobjan is jumping from a solar aircraft. And based on our technology, we have a future project. We have only designed the electric E10 in the Skylux company, where the main share of the folder is Electra Solar. Actually, we concentrate on Electra Trainer, but we are looking in the future for the E regional mobility. It's a stall aircraft, low limit speed, 55 decibels, high comfort, and very low operation cost. It's another product you can see in our ball is our Electra Viton, a 2.5 kilogram payload, can fly up to three hours with, without solar cells, and uh, up to eight hours will be with solar cells. Very high efficient aerodynamic. We are can fly missions with this for 3D mapping and also we'll extend this with uh, gimbal and uh, real-time uh, image transmission. It's very robust, can land with strong wing. And now, Electra Trainer, I just presented this. We have a glide ratio of at least 25. This is our main purpose in the company, to have high efficiency in aerodynamic and electric power. The German Museum, our first presentation of the aircraft. And the second is now the third. We will fly this aircraft in two or three weeks. We are, we have quite ready the plan to fly and we do the first flight me in uh, Mepinem. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Very interesting, as you see in the B hall, we have all ultralight aircraft, so I think there are a lot of people interested in this. Our next uh, presenter is a company which is also coming from ultralight. This aircraft, which Matthias Bech is now presenting, I think, or I know it's destined for part 23 as well. So, Matthias, it's yours. Good afternoon. So, at first, yes, the F2 is certified for the R23, and it's not the airplane, a single airplane, it's a new concept of airplanes. An airplane itself doesn't know where the power is coming from. Does it come from fuel or from electric? An airplane needs power to stay in the air, and if your efficiency of the airplane is better, it stays longer. Again, doesn't matter what engines you have. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we started to talk over electric propulsion. At that time, we made a, a parallel uh, a hybrid propulsion, and we have a worldwide patent for it. But we find out no, that's, real, that, that's a way to go, but that's not the way where we'll end up. So we needed a new concept because our old airplane, which is still so, uh, selling very well, the, the CT, with more than 2,000 airplanes around the world, has had limits for further propulsion systems. Now I have to find that. 
and uh, we invented the so-called F-Series. The F-Series is an affordable, scalable, modular system for two- and four-seat airplanes where, again, it doesn't matter what kind of propulsion you are using. We ourselves, we are airplane designer and manufacturer. We are not a battery designer. We are not a propulsion designer. We are not an avionic designer. In 2019, at the same time, we bring up the F2 and the F2E, one airplane flying with a Rotax combustion engine, the other airplane at that time flying with a Siemens electric engine. But what we see at that time is batteries are maybe good enough for 45 minutes if you are optimistic. Yeah? But we think when you go at flight training, you need an airplane which can fly two hours. Everything what is below two hours is not really practical, usable in the daily flight training. There is no problem with electric engine. There's a problem with certification. Because until now, there is no CSE certification existing on electric engine. Many people are working on it. I'm sure that soon they will come up. Yeah? But at the moment, we don't have. But that, even when we have now the certified engine, it will lead up for us the question of the power source. And we have heard, I think, in the last 10 years, Many, many concepts we learned over many problems. But would have been the same if we now invented the combustion engine. I think if we would go to the authorities now and say, hey, I want to put 200 liters of fuel into my wing, yeah, uh, they would not even start to laugh. You know? So uh, uh, the, the problems are similar to what we achieved already. But it's a, it's a question of time. Now, what it will be at the end? Will we have a, a, a super battery? Will we have a possibility to store 10, 20, 30 kilograms of hydrogen in the airplane. Yeah. Everybody, or no, many people are working on these kind of solutions, and some of them are really promising, but when they will be certified, uh, it's nobody knows at the moment. So, with that, we are at the moment two, uh, in two ways. Uh, we work with a, uh, uh, with a hydrogen project, mm, where at the moment we will have seven kilos of uh, hydrogen. Seven kilos give you something like 90 kilowatts. I mean, conservative, not streaming. Uh, 90 kilowatts of power. 90 kilowatts of power is something good enough for two hours for a two-seat airplane. Mm -hmm. Or we were in a break uh, on a battery solution. Well, the same, we need something like uh, 350 kilos of battery. And with the 350 kilos of battery, we can get something like 70 kilowatts, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and again, it's just okay for flying two hours. When these certified propulsion systems will be available, we will integrate them in the airplane as STC. We will not do, a, a, let's say, a certification of a power plant with the airplane. Because if you do that, you are very, very limited afterwards in the market. Because you will, okay, let's say you, you have a EASA certificate where you certify the engine uh, with the airplane. When you want to do a validation in whatever country around the world, you will be not successful. Because they will not accept, because this is not part of the scope of bilateral agreements, so we'll start from the scratch again. So that means a one integrated uh, good solution is our task. The airplane series we develop, uh, F2, F4, is very, I mean, it can do everything what everybody else says, so it's very comfortable. It has really space inside, enough space for hydrogen tanks, for batteries, for whatever we want, and it's really uh, very, very efficient. I just will go a little bit fast because I don't think this is so important on that, but, yeah, for example, when flying mates now tests, uh, the uh, most efficient airplane in its category, uh, category was the F2. And I think that's enough proof 
of the energy efficiency of the airplane, which will be the same then when you have afterwards an electric airplane. Huh? What we do in the meantime also uh, for the flying schools, we since 2020, when you buy an airplane from us with a Rotex 912 IS engine, uh, every airplane is CO2 compensated uh, by 100% for the first TBO. This is that something we can do now, it costs some money, but it's every, everything what we can do at the moment completely. Huh? Good. Thank you very much, and I hand it back to you, Willy. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, interesting micro. Uh, our next speaker, we go to one category higher, because that's people that the first step we will use electric uh, propulsion will be training and then e-commuters come. And John Botti is going to tell us his approach. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, so for us, we're not shooting for trainers, we're shooting for commercial and we're shooting for congestion. We're shooting for, well today, a regional aviation that needs to be revamped and it needs to be revamped by using existing infrastructures. So what I'm gonna to introduce to you today is the concept that will help us to do that. And we have been flying now for more than two years, two and a half years, with the most powerful hybrid, parallel hybrid electric airplane that exists today. So instead of uh, me talking too much, I'm gonna show you a movie of how this has been built. So if you can put the music on also on this, 50 seconds you'll understand what we have been doing here. 600 kilowatts, can you stop, ah, do I, is it me? Here we go, 600 kilowatts, 300 kilowatt electric, 300 kilowatt thermal. Can carry already the board train of 12 people. And it's flying since two years, more than two years now. Complete new, obviously, digital cockpit. We made everything, and we have to use an existing certified cell of six people, but the power train is already capable of 12. 120 kilowatt in the front, Safran engines, Iginius, and three electric motors from Slovakia in the back that makes a 300 kilowatt electric, plus a high performance Japanese engine of 300 kilowatts. To do the hybrid. This airplane always takes off electric, always lands electric, and do recharge on flights with uh, the batteries on, on, on board. So it's uh, it basically we use the thermal engine for safety and for recharging the batteries. By the way, we apologize, this airplane was supposed to be here next door, but uh, we when we got to Black Forest, uh, a belt broke into the thermal engine and uh, the two pilots had to come back in electric, full electric, and be landed one hour from here uh, in Montbéliard. So we couldn't show you the airplane. It was too late to bring it back here for the expo. But next year we will come back with this one and with another one. So this airplane today, uh, when it came to uh, the Black Forest, was already at 10,000 kilometers. And uh, you can see how much it's already outdated because this was, you know, I made this presentation a little bit before, 120 flight hours, 140 flights, 38 airports visited, and uh, as I said, this is a bit outdated. <laughs> but when you do this, the power train is perfect, but the aerodynamics is not. The hell of a deal of this one is around 10. We need at least 50% more aerodynamics efficiency. This is why we have created the Casio 2 uh, prototype, uh, which uh, the objective here is really to extend now uh, the right aerodynamics with an LOD at minimum 15 in order to be able to have a better longevity, a better range, or even more performance. And I want just to highlight a couple of things on this is that this airplane will have a, a max tool speed of 200 knots. Three and, a, three and a half hours of uh, autonomy. So, and it can fly pure electric, less than 200 kilometers. This is not theory. This is all based on the plane you have seen before that we have been flying for two years now, where we have acquired a lot of data to be able to substantiate this. So, 
again, a little movie that presents it because the concept of this plane is not only a plane for passengers. It's a multifunctional airplane. Here is a little, uh, in terms of passengers, you have three versions, four, five seats, six, and 10, 12 seats. This is how we're looking at various configuration, various missions. And I want to show you a little movie in 50 seconds that tells it all. and quiet aircraft with two sources of energy. It's eco-friendly and can switch from electric to hybrid with low operating costs. It can enhance mobility and connect communities. Its modular capabilities enable medical evacuation and both passenger and cargo transportation. This is the Casio 330. So, this Casio 330 will be ready at the end of this year. Uh, we will have the first, you know, uh, we will do the first testing in aerodynamics. And uh, just to show you here, modular concept, many applications. As I said, not only passengers, but you can do med evacuation, you can do cargo, you can have a wheelchair that will go in there directly. So we have an expansion, if you want, of this airplane to do multiple applications. Again, take off, all electric, landing, all electric, less than 200 kilometers, all electric. When you are above 200 kilometers of flight, you start to do hybridization and you recharge the batteries. So this is, uh, by the end of the story. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, the interesting for you, uh, most of you already have been for sure sitting in a plane for which Joe was responsible because before he started this plane, he was uh, CTO of Airbus. And but now he wants to have the fun of real flying again. Uh, now we have another ma manufacturer presenting us who is also creating planes of which many of us have been sitting in, Technam. And uh, Fabio, uh, please give us uh, your view of the electric bike. Yes, I hope not only. If you can come to visit us, we are in uh, hall A4. I'm sorry if I was late. Uh, I missed your presentation. They are friends and uh, we are in very good contact with, uh, with them. One, one thing, perhaps just uh, interrupting you, we're recording everything, so if you miss everything, if you have to run to a day, we will have everything online, so you can watch it later. Good to know. I think I have already the presentation. Uh, by the way, uh, so first of all, I would like to invite you all to know how A4, where we just presented two days ago the Pimentor, and uh, Pimentor was just certified three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and it's the first, the very first IFR certified uh, after uh, many years in the two-seat category. It has been the first time a Rotax 912IS is now certified IFR. It has been the first time ever a Garmin G3X has been certified on IFR aircraft uh, by the OEM, so not uh, with the uh, STC. Why I'm talking about this? Because this is uh, strictly related with uh, sustainability. We have made uh, some exercise in the last few months and uh, we uh, recognize that uh, flight schools that today buy a fleet based on Tecna, two seat and uh, single engine and twin engine aircraft uh, save per each pilot that uh, goes from zero to CPR license they save 10 tons of CO2 emission compared with the uh, old uh, aircraft that are in, uh, usually uh, on, in the uh, flight school. So this is, this is uh, sustainable and uh, I will show you in, uh, in a video. But let's go back uh, in the future and uh, this is what I, will, I would like to talk with you. It's the, the title is uh, probably uh, a big provocation, let's say. In search of sustainability, we have uh, so many uh, 
press releases, so many news, so many projects all around the world that I completely understand also for uh, a magazine, it is very, very hard to interpret those projects, to see or to go above what are the press release and the press release content. It's very, very hard. And I would like to uh, give you some hints. This is the time when, uh, when we presented the pivot late in 2020, and the media resonance have been just huge. I would uh, probably estimate 10 times more rather than when we uh, annunciated any other aircraft certified by Tecri, but this is currently a random. So the point is that the time we are living now is quite strange. It's quite strange for many aspects. Often a render and a, a kind of press release does more noise than the aircraft certified or fleet certified or novelties like uh, many uh, cast, many aircraft manufacturers do. The aircraft, the pivot, is, uh, will be based around the P-2012, that is the first twin-engine piston certified in the worldwide general aviation arena after 40 years, and it's already in service to many customers. The main one is Cape Air, is the airline company in the United States. Very last uh, configuration in terms of avionics uh, and uh, extremely comfortable cabin. I, don't used to fly a lot from the back seat, but uh, I did in uh, a few times in the United States, and it's very, very pleasant to fly. Zero emission aviation. I used to read more, many, many around uh, uh, fixed wing, mainly fixed wing. I don't used to uh, read a lot about TV call and uh, those other uh, type of uh, urbanized mobility, let's call it like this. I used to read more about the uh, fixed wing conventional aircraft configuration and the project list is just huge. The problem is that if you enter in a very top level but uh, also in a high detail of many projects, you see that uh, very often the specs and the performance is a kind of over-promising and over-promising is also and very often the entering service goal. I would uh, say that 80% uh, of projects until a few months ago claimed for entering service 2024. So this was the date that you can read almost everywhere. So that's why we wanted to promote, I call it education, but probably it's more the, uh, on the knowledge side of what is realistically achievable in terms of uh, timeline, in terms of specification, in terms of performance, when we talk about even novel aircraft projects. Ah, I do think it's uh, really high visibility here. This is just one example, and it's a kind of quiz I made for, for you. You can see many uh, points here. You see the empty weight. This is a, a plot that shows the empty weight of almost all the types of general aviation aircraft in the world existing, old, new, turboprop, piston, single engine, twin engine, pressurized, non-pressurized, and you will, you will see here the empty weight compared with the maximum takeoff weight. For those few aircraft that are full electric here, the empty weight is the airframe weight only, so the, the airframe that is everything, let's say, behind the uh, without battery. And you can see how curious is this. All the aircraft, there, are, there is no name, but they will appear. Just think any kind of aircraft of general aviation, conventional uh, aircraft uh, from general aviation, any top, whatever is the general aviation uh, aircraft that comes into your mind. Cessna, okay. Any other? Hypoprop, single engine, twin engine, pressurized, non pressurized, Pilatus, the Piaggio, twin otter, 
all of them are falling between these two lines that represent the ratio between the airframe weight with the motors or engines and the maximum takeoff weight. When you see two projects here, you start having some doubts if there is any chance for an airframe to weigh 0.3 like the maximum takeoff weight. It's kind of difficult. So that's why what I would like to transfer to the majority of people is to enter always in detail when uh, you read some specs or you receive some uh, press release, some specification. I will not go in uh, detail of what those two aircraft are, but uh, I can tell you that one of these two bubbles is already uh, traveling on the, on the concrete in, the, in this moment, in this period, that's it. So this is just to let you know how uh, important it is to interpret and to look indeed to weights to energy densities if it is a matter of uh, uh, battery and so on. We do this with a uh, few experience uh, on our side. I don't know if uh, uh, you are aware that the NASA bought two Technam P2006 in 2015 and uh, both those uh, P2006 are the baseline of the Maxwell project. We are working on, with the Rolls-Royce on H3PS, that is uh, probably the first general aviation four-seater aircraft uh, powered with uh, parallel hybrid. So parallel hybrid, I, I don't want to mix. Sorry, fake news? Okay, you will uh, let me know. But uh, I saw your, uh, your aircraft uh, that... Uh, I think yeah, that is serious, <laughs> but, uh, but we talk uh, later. And I think later. we have the discussion later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's, let's turn the news, probably is better. To me, serious, to me, or to many other people, parallel library means the internal combustion engine and the electric motor are on the same shelf. So you cannot operate one, or you cannot operate the electric motor alone. Serious cycle is when you have a generator and the only thing that spins the propeller is the electric motor. So probably we can find a common agreement on this. Uh, anyway, we, we, uh, uh, let, let, let's him continue the yeah. discussion. No and, uh, Absolutely. Let's the open for uh, questions. Uh, there is a short video on uh, how we see sustainability, as I told you before, what we do what we certify, what we sell, it's uh, already sustainable and uh, it allows you to save for uh, every single pilot 10 tons of CO2 in the CPL training course. It's just one minute video. There is no serious or parallel no problem. To liability for things we see in life. It's good to have a discussion because it's a discussion. This is fine really big numbers to prove it. Based on the aviation training process for a commercial pilot's license. Take a look. To get a CPL license, rookie pilots need to train for 155 hours on a single engine aircraft and twin engine. He can choose a school with fuel-hungry airplanes powered by Avgas or with the Technum fleet. Results are essential for your wallet, but mostly for the environment. The average CO2 emissions on the first stage of training is almost 12 tons, plus almost 5 tons during twin engine flights. But on the Technum fleet, there is only 4.6 tons of CO2 on the first stage and less than 2 tons on the second stage. The difference is huge. This zone should knock you off your feet. More than 10 tons CO2 less in the atmosphere. I, I hope this is not the fake news because this allowed three flight school 
in one in Spain in particular to get foundings from Romania. So why we are uh, also pushing on this side? There is a customer that came to us and he told us, I was able to get funding from bank for my new uh, fleet based on Tecna because we made, they made the calculation and they arrived to this number. We made again the calculation and we confirmed this number that are uh, even more, more confirmed with the key mentor that we just presented. So, what is the question that you should make when you read the press release or uh, any announcement? You should uh, investigate always about weight, about uh, range of uh, the aircraft that uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, presented to you. In particular, uh, uh, I would like always to consider the worst case scenario and the most conservative scenario. If you have a battery that uh, in your iPhone, when you buy the iPhone, the battery life, the battery health is 100%. After 300 charges, that battery falls below 90%. This happened exactly the same on uh, bigger battery, automotive batteries, and uh, aviation battery. So, how we calculated the performance of the pivot? We already take into account for the performance of pivot the loss of 10% of battery health. So whatever you see about pivot is 90% of state of health for batteries. Not the first flight, but the flight number 600, 800, or 1000, depending on the batteries, or 2000. Also, this is just uh, is not a real number that represents the current technology, but when you see that, the, or you read that the, made the operating cost for an electric aircraft is a, a fraction of the standard conventional aircraft, you at least have to take into account that the new battery price has a cost. And after 600 or 800 or 1,000 or 2,000 flights, you should replace that battery. This is a cost. For the engine, the name is uh, engine price reserve. For the battery will be battery price reserve. And they have a great ideas for uh, limiting this uh, number that uh, will be in any case there also for the people that we are taking into the account. So we don't look only to the recharge price and cost. This is why what we do is to only consider the state of art technology without betting on future technology that nobody knows, we can uh, expect, we can welcome, but uh, we are now investing, we have now to design the aircraft uh, and we cannot design around something that we don't know. End of life battery only con in consideration. Provide range at uh, and uh, maximum range corresponding speed that is uh, very often uh, different from uh, the high cruise speed is not the best range speed and the difference can be huge. This is why you will see for people maximum speed is 180 knots but the maximum range speed is 120 knots. The speed where you can reach the maximum mile over D. Then, considering the uh, life cycle emission for producing battery. You have any idea today to produce one kilowatt hour battery, how many kilograms of CO2 are needed? It's 78, more or less. 73 plus four or five for battery transportation. This is something that we should take care and take into account. Considering the uh, achievable the current price trend for batteries we know that today the car the automotive batteries are uh, probably below 100 uh, uh, dollars per kilowatt hour but for aviation this is not true not because they want to earn more money but because the effort and investment to arrive to aerospace product is uh, extremely different the software behind the control behind the materials behind this completely different then, not only take into account the recharging emission from the energy mix of your country, but always remember that 
world does not take care about where the uh, warming is coming from. If the battery is produced in a, some other country, we should take into account. And this is what was uh, bringing to us to the real, realistic and achievable specs for the people. You can see this 14 nautical miles plus BFR reset. This is the pivot range. I invite you to wait and to see the real specs of aircraft that are supposed to fly in the next months, and you will see that uh, 400 nautical miles will be realistically below 190 nautical miles, more or less. But you will see, so we can determine if there is no fake news. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I got it. So, some other number interesting on this point. Yeah, again, this is completely that end of life for batteries. 5,000 feet uh, cruise. There is a formula that gives, gives you the cruise, uh, the range for uh, any aircraft, and it can be also for uh, electric aircraft. But uh, for those aircraft, like electric ones, that have a very, very short cruise leg, the real analysis should be done on the entire flight profile. And you should take into account what is the cabin consuming in terms of energy. If you are on ground and the cabin needs uh, to be cooled down, uh, the battery needs to be heat up, or uh, the energy that is needed to taxi, the energy that is needed to climb to the uh, cruise speed, and the energy that is needed to descend. It's uh, not uh, always, almost not always true. This is true for uh, Pipistrel because they have a very, very efficient uh, glider, the baseline, that you can uh, actually recharge the battery somehow during the descent. But on the aircraft that are supposed to carry people, you cannot go on negative power and uh, experiencing with people 3,000 feet per minute descent. It's, uh, it's at least it's not comfortable. So the energy consumption is during the climb, during cruise, during the descent, and during the taxi back to the state. This is what we used to consider. I think, yes, this was the latest one, but this is uh, something that you will find. It's, uh, it's the last one. Yes, yeah. it's the last one. This is just a computation of the grams of CO2 per uh, kilometer per passenger on uh, P volt in the 40 nautical mile mission. So you see, this is the best group. So this is 2050 energy mix, majority of energy for recharging and producing batteries coming from renewable. And you will see that uh, after 1,600 flights, uh, the, uh, the balance will be on better than uh, 50% sub-fueled uh, hypothetical P2012. There is no uh, sub for P2012 today, but if there will be 50% blend sub on 2050, you will have to uh, reach the flight number 1600 to go on the uh, advantage side of the LN. Because if I just made 100 flights and I destroy the aircraft or I sell the aircraft, I am responsible for the production of the battery and recharging of the battery for only 100 flights. After 600 or 800 flights or 2,000 flights, I am responsible for the production of another battery that needs to be replaced from the original one. So this is the two, but at a certain point there is the uh, change and uh, the, the full electric becomes absolutely convenient. That's all from my side. Thank you, uh, because we still want to have, you see, there is a discussion coming up, so we want to have some time for the discussion. So we have one uh, last presentation, which gives us a glimpse, which is also for our audience, uh, that where we can go and how we can use the plane, because Hans Dunder from uh, Sweden, he, they are working in uh, collaboration with other Scandinavian states and I think that we lot, read a lot that probably Scandinavia with a lot of renewable energy produced because this is something we have to consider when we just fly batteries 
does not mean that it's uh, automatically more green because if the battery, if the energy comes from coal mines and coal power plants, it would, it's, it's not at all. So Scandinavia can be a first rate of green flying. So tell us what the green flyway means and wh what are you doing already now, right now? Well, thank you. I will sit down and try to make my presentation from here due to problems with my back. Um, and, well, I'm a senior advisor uh, working for this uh, Green Flyway project, which is the intention is a Swedish, Norwegian, European funded project, which is to develop an international test arena for future aviation. And we are really doing it both with um, for electric aircraft, which are using fixed wing with conventional takeoff and landing, but we are also looking upon drones or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which are either uh, without or with pilots on board. What we are developing is an international test arena with everything within walking distance. This happens to be a former Air Force base with all the facilities left, so to say, because it was uh, abandoned and it became a private uh, entity where we are now using the possibilities with enormous hangars and a lot of testing facilities, but possibilities, and the, run, the, the runway and a lot of free airspace around the top surroundings. <clears throat> what we are doing is really to, to have a duty test arena, as we call it, for these aircrafts, uh, but also for uh, air traffic management and for the U, uh, UTM or U space, use and ground support around that. Um, <clears throat> We call it in Europe, U space, and, and in the US, it's UTM. Well, we have this large free airspace, but we have a rather, rather tough weather. It's in the middle of Sweden, but it's regarded uh, as Sweden and Norway, but it's, it's rather north. And um, we are able uh, those who come to test uh, to, uh, in our arena to fly from point to point, not only from A to A, up and down. And we can also, because this is a cross-border project between Sweden and Norway, and we are, as you probably know, in the absolute forefront when it comes to the discussions of, of sustainable development, sustainable transport, greening of transport, which includes greening of air transport. And both Sweden and Norway have put up really tough goals to, towards this. So, 2040 to 2045, we will be totally fossil free in all transport modes, including air transport, domestic transport. Um, and um, this means that you have to provide solutions for that. And you have to come up with solutions for that. And that is what we are trying to do. And we are pro providing with the challenging this um, environment, as we call it. but. We are also understanding it's not only up in the air, but we have to have a lot of ground support. And I have got some highlights that we are bringing up. Because this is a project, I will come back with that, with 20 partners, uh, with, the, with the Swedish government, the, the LF3, the Swedavia, but the Norwegian Avinur, but also Sweden Scandinavian Airlines, Hart Aerospace. Uh, we have, um, is working with, with uh, regional, uh, energy companies because we are producing 100% guaranteed 100% renewable energy in all kinds of forms uh, mostly electric but it's hydropowered hydropower and and uh, wind mills that produce it we have enormous exporters of, of high, uh, this kind we are also going to start to produce green hydrogen locally and, and we are also uh, being able to supply with sustainable aviation fuel what we have actually here in Östersund is, is a long, long runway and a uh, lot of air space, but um, an uh, enormous amount of hangar space uh, and also infrastructure, electric infrastructure. It becomes, you have to recharge these aircraft and with a lot of effect. So, so what we are having, as this is a former Air Force base, we had a lot of energy on the spot already, but we are now investing in, in uh, bringing forward 
several megawatts of energy, but uh, in the first step is a one megawatt for charging of aircraft. Um, and what we are waiting for is the charging standard, what we are really looking forward to. So, but we will be able to take care of whatever kind of standard will be. We have the effect, we have the energy, and it's absolutely clear. Uh, we have also possibilities to provide you with, if you are testing wind tunnels, we are cooperating with the local university, the Mid-Sweden University and the Norwegian universities. And we can also, we have a big energy test set, we can bring an entire aircraft in there. And, and this is due to the Air Force needs before. And um, what we can also uh, do is maintain general aviation aircraft, helicopters, we have heavy maintenance and research and development uh, in this area. And this is the space, what you can see the, the, from summer. And this is what we have in this airspace. And this project started in 2019. And our aim was to show that we could fly cross-border also. And, and because in our project, we are not just a test arena. We are also looking upon the possibilities to develop the region. Uh, in, in a sustainable way and also use electric aircraft as, as a real game changer and for that we wanted to demonstrate also that it's possible so we flew just before the covid hit us between sweden and norway over the mountains here with a flight uh, which was uh, filmed so you can go into our homepage and look about that um, to see this and the covid hit and then it stopped, so we got a border again. And this summer we will now take the next step. We will actually fly with, with drones over the border, beyond line of vision sight, Vigilos. Uh, we have three airports, uh, which is Estesund, Sveg, Röros, uh, in Norway, uh, Estesund like that, and Sveg like that. So we have all kinds of airports, we have grass fields, a lot of possibilities also. We have a lot of square meters of hangars, an official. We are having electric infrastructure for providing absolute guaranteed 100% fossil free energy. Um, and we have these wind tunnels with a lot of climate issues that we have. We have maintenance of all kinds, including 145, uh, electric 145 uh, station and we have the EMC capabilities this was a former Air Force base of SAAB has their their EMC lab and their prototype labs there for doing enormous tests this is also civilian now of course but they are also testing of course tanks and everything else but this is where we are testing one one of these cap uh, well these the drones we have the engine tester where we can bring in an entire aircraft and, and we can long run test this, uh, this um, uh, engines, whatever kind of dry frame you have and you want to test for 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, including control uh, about temperatures for your batteries. You can have minus 20 with the batteries and so on. Uh, this can be do, done in, in an extremely safe way in our test cell. And we have partners, because we have to have partners. We, we as Prodi cannot have ourselves. We are working very closely with the partners who are able to additive manufacturing or have a, 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 you know, design organization approvals, production organization approvals, and whatever. So, so um, we have this in, in our network. And we, these are the industrial partners. We can have events also, of course. And what we are providing is support in the certification process. We are also working with civil aviation agencies. We are very, very close friends with the Swedish and Norwegians. This is very good to have a project because the Norwegians are leading much more forward sometimes. And th then they are bringing, we decide to the Swedes, what, why are the Norwegians so much better or faster or what, whatever? And, and then they have to follow. Sometimes it happens vice versa, that the Norwegians are, are dragging their feet behind them and we push them with the Swedes. So, so we, we really want to have a Nordic cooperation, that is what we are doing. But we have also financial support, uh, which is necessary when you come to development of that. 
uh, we have used, we are using EU funding, we are using uh, investment partners as well. Sorry when I interrupt you. Thank you. But was the, was the, we <laughs> were due to yes. some uh, points already too long because now the next session is already setting. So very sorry because I really, I think we should continue the discussion. Go over there, um, because the, the, we've seen there are some discussions. We will keep you updated. We don't have time for for the discussion right now. We uh, because just took a little bit too long. Uh, everybody, not everybody. Some were really good in time. I have to admit. And uh, sorry for this. Um, so see you next time. Stay tuned. We will report. Uh, on all this uh, in the magazines and online and uh, get you updated also on the different positions you heard, heard here on the podium.